the sun was faithful for to me a virgin born of David's son shall bear the promise that's not how this will be today we're at cathedral prep the preparatory seminary that the diocese has a long history uh, there's about 180 students here, young men, who, when they come here, promise to discern if they have a vocation to the priest. And not everybody obviously has one, but they do promise, and they are given support and direction here to see if there is a vocation to the priest in their life, or to find their vocation as, as good Catholic men. Today we celebrate at the Mass of the Annunciation, <coughs> the special feast, and one of the features of the Mass was today was the day that they gave out the presents, uh, rewards for essays on Our Lady. It's an interesting history. The man who donated the land for the first cathedral prep in 1914 uh, also asked that each year the students would do an essay on Our Lady. And uh, the students this year did an essay on uh, the Pope's visit to uh, the shrine of Pompeii in Italy. And they took his speeches there, his talks, and then commented on them. So uh, today we gave out uh, four prizes, actually, for those who had the best essays. And they gave me a copy, so I'm looking forward to reading them. Yesterday's news carried the story about the change in uh, the law regarding Plan B. The Plan B pill is the morning after a Bordafacian bill, pill which had been restricted by the Federal Drug Administration for use for those who were 18 years of old and age of old and older. Unfortunately, a judge in New York on the appeal said that the FDA had been unduly influenced by the Bush administration. And so now it would be possible for 17-year-olds to receive the pill without any prescription. This morning, an editor of the New York Times wished that 11- and 12-year-olds could also receive the pill without any prescription. It only is a sign of our society that has come to see sexual intercourse as inevitable, even with 11- and 12-year-olds. It's not the easiest thing to say today, but what does this have to do with the Feast of the Annunciation? I guess it tells us that our understanding of conception, our understanding of commitment and sexual intercourse is totally different from what the world understands today. Yes, today we come with great joy in the midst of Lent to celebrate this Feast of the Annunciation. We are happy that Mary was that teenage woman, actually, teenager that she was, who accepted God's will that changed the course of history. And so today we say with Mary, may it be done to us according to your will, Lord. Help us to discern that will. Help us to live it out in our lives. regular high school they have to take entrance exam everything is the same and um, as I say they do very well it's a good academic school and uh, those who discern for the priesthood then would go on to cathedral uh, college at uh, Douglaston and um, some would come back later on it's interesting we have one graduate now who was um, 
and then in his 50s, a lawyer who had gone to collegial prep, had a career, and now he's back in the seminary. So you never know <laughs> what happens. <laughs> Conceived by the power of the Spirit, and bore your son in purest love. In Christ, the eternal truth, you promised to Israel true, your promise to Israel came true. In Christ, the hope of all peoples, man's hope was realized beyond all expectation. Through Christ, the angels of heaven offer their adoration and praise as they rejoice in your presence forever. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to a supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be in him. Uh, the fathers of the church, I'm not sure which one, but there's a saying that goes, De Maria Numquam Satis, which means regarding Mary that you never can say enough. And I guess it's uh, so important that we understand the role of Mary in our lives as Christian Catholics. We see her today certainly as the mother of the Redeemer, the one who consented to give birth to Jesus Christ. And that consent continues through history, down through history, because Mary, as each of our mothers, given to us by Jesus, gives birth to us as Catholic Christians, gives us that motherly care, that heavenly intercession, which is so important. So as we plumb the depths of our understanding about Mary, we never can know enough, because she is truly a mother. And as we come to understand her, we come to love her more, but mostly we love more Jesus, her son, and God himself. Amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Again, Mary took God's will uh, and lived it out. And I guess this is the same I'm asking these young men to think about what's God's will for you? Is it to be a priest, a religious? Is it to follow some other vocation in life? But as, as I said, and Mary in prayer understood God's will, the angel Gabriel came to her. I don't think our young men will have angels come to them, but they will in prayer know what God wants them to do. I'm sure of that.
prefer the same quote to fight for justice? This is Christ the King High School. It's one of the diocesan high schools that now has been put into the uh, private sector as a, with a board that runs it as a Catholic high school. It's a very big school. At one time there were brothers and sisters uh, resident here. Now those residences are empty. Those, that's the third floor or the fourth floor of the building. But it's a great facility, gym, auditorium, uh, cafeteria, many classrooms. Um, it's one of the jewels, I think, of the diocese when it comes to high schools. Today is the annual Diocesan Youth Day. It anticipates the World Youth Day, which is celebrated every year in Rome on Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And um, it is also, when we remember, the every four years we have the World Youth Day. And last year we were in Australia. The next time it will be in, in 2011 in uh, Madrid. Um, so today we honor the youth of our church and challenge them to become uh, good Catholics, to understand their faith and have their faith help them in their youth of their life, which is a time when we really need faith. My brothers and sisters, it's my pleasure to be with you today as you come to celebrate this annual Diocesan Youth Day. Today is a day for young people. It's a day when all of us must feel young in the spirit. Each time we come to the Eucharist, we have an opportunity to become new again. We call to mind our sins. We seek the Lord's forgiveness, and it comes to us. So we pause and call to mind oh, our sins. Of heart and soul, oh, just yeah, you know, I was invited by the diocese to be not only a part of today, but to do uh, a little bit of the gathering the last two days with seventh and eighth grade and confirmation students. So it was a terrific trip. They had me come out. I've done something every day with young people in the diocese and a family concert last night. Marilyn Santos was the person who invited me and we've been together at big national conferences and different things like that. And it's just been extraordinary to see the energy and the faith of the young people here in Brooklyn, Queens. Each year on Palm Sunday, the Holy Father in Rome for the last 24 years has had World Youth Day. Yes, it is celebrated every year. Once every four years or three years, there is a World Youth Day when all the youth of the world gather together. Last year it was in Australia. Each year the Holy Father issues a message for World Youth Day and this year, he issued a message that speaks about youth as a time of hope. How clear that is. As young people, we understand what hope is. He says, youth is a special time of hope because it looks to the future with a whole range of expectations. When we are young, we cherish ideals, dreams, and plans. Youth is the time when decisive choices concerning the rest of our lives come to fruition. Perhaps this is the time of life when the fundamental questions assert themselves. We all know that when we're down and out, there's one place we all cry out. We want my mother. We want our mothers because they have a special way of giving us the consolation we need. And so it is with Mary too. She can give us that consolation and hope when we all other things and other people fail us. Concluding, the Holy Father tells us, 
Mary is the star of the sea. Ask that she guide you over the turbulence of life because keeping your eyes fixed on her will give you the hope you need to overcome all things that might be in your way. And so I say the same to you. Keep your eyes fixed on Our Lady and Jesus, her son, and you never will lose hope and you always will find the happiness that you want in life. At his command, we celebrate this Eucharist. The night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Well, basically the program of the day, we, we follow a, a format we call like a mini conference model, which includes a keynote, um, the, the children arrive, there's registration, there's some kind of an expo this year we went with vocations as a theme so we have different religious communities here and then there's a, a light snack for them then they have a keynote and then the young people go off into workshops or some people call them breakout sessions where they get um, they're more specific in topic and then we always have liturgy as a community of catholics we feel that that's really key and then another thing that we do really well as catholics is we eat well together we break bread so we always think, you know, we break bread in the Mass, and then we end the day um, in a community meal. Um, and that, that's basically it. It's a long day. You know, we usually go from around 12 to 6 p.m. So people usually live here, both adults and young people, exhausted. But it's a really different kind of exhausted. If it's possible to be exhausted and really full of energy at the same time, that's what I always see happening when people leave here. The body of Christ. 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 Of the day. Anna, one of the members of our youth council will present it to you. 2X, very good. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank Marilyn Santos for the wonderful leadership she gives to the youth program in our diocese. And I hope that we, when we do this next year, we have double the amount. So tell your friends that it's a good day. God bless. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's very important. I think we, we want to uh, make sure that we reach out to the youth and all of the surveys we do for the people of the, of the diocese and the parishes, and we ask them what's the most important thing you think we should do as a church. It's always youth work. They see that as important. They see that as the future. So uh, I think this is important in everybody's view that we reach out and do something for the youth. Mm. I mean, we, we, we really did kind of most of the planning because what she did, what she just told us, this is what it was about. This is the kind of, this is the age range she was going to have. And then what she told us was basically, what do you think people at this age want to talk about? And we kind of had like, you know, we divided into types of groups. And then, I mean, I was part of the opening prayer where it was like the whole noise business, the whole video type, where we think that as youth, we really can't change the world. And we really, but what she told us was, we realized that the littlest thing can make a difference and um that was basically it and we, we divided into groups their closing prayer the middle the whole candle business we really came up with everything with her help but you know it was really our idea and we really put things that at the workshops we put things that we wanted to discuss and stuff
Well, being a leader has changed me like completely. I'm more mature now and spiritually increased my faith. Like I'm more involved in my church, more involved with God, and doing a lot of things for everybody, especially for the church and everything. One, three, a lady of Lord. One, two. 